In this video I'm going to look at how you can tell the order of reaction from half-life. So obviously the first place to start is what do we mean by half-life? Well half-life is the time it takes for the concentration of a reactant to half from its original value. So you can see I've written in the corner here to go from one mole per decimeter cubed to 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed that's a halving of concentration the time it takes for that to happen I've just put seconds there would be classed as the half-life to go from 0.5 to 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed i.e. to half the concentration from here now would be classed as the next half-life and obviously to half again, so from 0 0.25 to 0 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed is another halving of the concentration, so that is the next half-life. So essentially, to go from 1 mole per decimeter cubed to 0 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed would be three half-lives. So if we bring order of a reaction in now, you can see I've got a graph here um, a concentration time graph for a first order reaction. So we get this classic curve that we've seen quite a lot in the rates topic and you can see that the half-life has been measured on the graph so we're starting in this case at 0 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed so the time it takes to go to half of that which would be 0 0.1 so the time it takes to do that is the first half-life. So the second half-life would be the time it takes to go from 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed to 0 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. So if we look at that half-life, so it's that period of time there. And then to go from 0 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed to 0 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed is that period there. And you can see it's written up on the graph anyway, but hopefully you can see by looking at the graph that the half-life for this first order reaction is constant. So that's a really, really important fact that we need to um, keep hold of for the rates topic. First order reactions have constant half-lives. And there on the board there's a couple of examples of where we see constant half-lives due to this first order process. So we've got radioactive decay and that's obviously the basis behind something like radiocarbon dating where they use the fixed half-life for the radioactive decay to age um, an artifact. And another example is the pharmacokinetics of some drugs. So some drugs, when you take them, it takes um, a specific amount of time for the concentration levels to half from their original value when you first took them. And obviously that's going to help um, drugs companies to uh, work out when it's safe to take the next dose. Now for the next part of the video, I'm going to attempt to talk through the maths behind this Please don't um, worry about this. This would never ever be asked at A-level. So don't stress out about it. Just in case anybody's interested in knowing where it comes from. So I'll have a go at doing that now. So you'll all be familiar with the rate equation for a first order reaction would look like this. Rate equals K. K is the rate constant. The concentration of A raised to the power 1. Obviously that's the order there, that 1. If you integrated this rate equation, or sometimes known as the rate law, we get the integrated rate law, which looks like this. So we have the half-life is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by k. So you can see that concentration does not feature in this integrated rate law. So that's telling us that the half-life is independent of the concentration. So the concentration will not change the half-life. Now if you just think about it in these terms, we've got a constant here on the top, natural log of 2 
is always the same value. This k is a constant. So effectively, we have got a constant divided by another constant, which is always going to give us the same answer. And so therefore, the half-life for first order reactions is constant. I'll just finish by going through the other orders that we need to know about for A level. So we have second order and the zero order as well. I'll do second order now. So this is what a concentration time graph looks like for a second order reaction. So we've got moles per decimeter cubed, so that's the concentration against time. And you can see now with this curve we have different half-lives each time. So to go from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed, it takes this period of time here, so that's 1, 2, 2.5 squares. To go from 0 0.1 to 0 0.05, it's taking this period of time, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.5 squares. So that's not constant, is it? And you can see to go from 0 0.05 to 0 0.025, it's increasing. So for a second order reaction, the half-life actually increases. So as the concentration decreases, the half-life is getting longer. So we don't have that constant half-life anymore. So again, I'm going to attempt the maths. So the rate equation, or rate law, sometimes um, people call it, for a second order reaction would be rate equals K, concentration of the reactant squared. The integrated rate law for this comes out as half-life equals 1 over K times the concentration. So hopefully you can see as you lower this number in here, what you'd actually do would be to increase t a half. And that's because effectively if you lower the concentration of A, you're making the denominator smaller. One over a smaller denominator is going to give you a bigger number. And we'll finish with zero order reactions. So you can see that the concentration time graph is a straight line. And again, we're starting at 0 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed. So the first half-life to get to 0 0.1 takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, six and a half squares, if you like. So this period of time here. And then to half again, to from 0 0.1 to 0 0.05, is going to take this period of time. So you can see it's actually getting shorter. If we look at the third half-life to go down to 0 0.025, we get a smaller half-life again. So for zero-order reactions, as the concentration lowers, the half-life decreases as well. So finally, the maths behind this. There's the classic rate equation for a zero-order reaction. Rate equals K, concentration of A raised to the power zero. So that's the order. The integrated rate law, rate equation, t a half, half life equals the concentration divided by 2 times k. And so if we just think about some numbers now, as we lower this number, but we divide them by a constant effectively, we will lower the value of t a half. So just think if that was 4 over a constant, then 3 over the same constant, then 2 over the same constant, and 1 over the same constant, you're getting smaller values or smaller answers for t a half. So apologies to any mathematicians out there who sort of cringed at the way I explained the maths behind it. I'm not particularly worried because at A level I know that all you need to know is the fact that for a first order reaction, the half-life is constant.